so today I wanted to show you my free three week program and it's called Shapely Shredding System. And the focus of this program is to show you different ways to progressively overload an exercise because Progressive overload is so, so important in order to see results. And initially it's done by adding weight and reps or sets and but there's eventually you're going to plateau at that point. Like once you've been training for a while, it becomes a lot more difficult to be adding reps and weight and sets because you can only do so many sets before it just gets ridiculous. So in comes some of these other various techniques that can make an exercise more challenging without actually increasing the weight. So that is what Shapely Shredding is all about. Um, you typically, because it's only three weeks long, you typically wouldn't change things up as frequently as this program does, but because it's only three weeks and I wanted to show you how to progress, that's the explanation in that because I'm a firm believer that you need to stick to one thing for a period of time so you can continuously progress on it. You can't progress if you're continuously changing things. So. Hope that makes sense. If you would like a copy of your, if you would like a copy of Shapely Shredding System, you can just subscribe to my email list. It is lauramichellefitness.com and we will send it to you and you are going to love it. All of the, all of the videos for the entire program is on my Instagram. I have a highlight called free program. So if you, are worried about knowing the exercises, you can just refer to that. And that is it. Let's get into the workout. And then one more thing, in the, when you receive the workout in your email, that is where the full sets, reps, rest times, and things like that are written in. So without further ado, let's get to the workout. Oh yeah. Oh. So we're starting off this week with barbell squats. Now for these, you want to picture pushing your hips back and down because you don't have the box this week. You want to make sure you're getting a good range of motion. You're going to want to increase the weight from last week. Since last time they were eccentric accentuated, that makes it a lot more challenging to use your regular weight. So this week you can bump the weight on up. Woot woot. So here are pause sumo deadlifts. Now I love these. I also hate them because they're really hard, but they are so killer. They really, really burn your glutes out. So basically what you're gonna do is pause on your way up for a couple seconds below the knee. So it doesn't have to be a long pause, just a little pause and then up you go and then back down again. So towards the end of the set, when you are starting to get really fatigued, make sure you keep your neck neutral and just keep looking straight forward. I know for me, sometimes when I'm really struggling, I start to like look up too much and my neck is moving around and that's not good. You are putting yourself at risk of injury. So just watch out for that and just basically keep your entire body tight and braced throughout the entire movement, your legs, your back, squeeze your shoulder blades behind you and voila. So this week we are making our Mayo reps a little bit harder than last week. We're stepping it up. So what we're doing is adding just an extra set of Mayo reps. So just like last time, you'll do your 10 reps and then you'll take a five second rest. Then you'll do three reps, take another five second rest. Then you'll do two reps, and then this time you will take another five second rest and do two more reps. Phew! And then you'll rest a minute and start all over again. This week we are changing up the tempo on the lunges. So, what you're gonna do is lower down for four seconds. Pause at the bottom for two seconds and then take about a second to stand back up and keep repeating it on one leg until you've done all of your reps and then switch legs. Of course, make sure you do the same amount of reps per leg. And then for our superset, we're going straight into seated banded abductors. You can use two bands if you need to increase the difficulty. And there's going to be three different positions for this. So you're going to start off leaning forward and then you are going to sit straight up, 
She's going to do it in a second, guys. <laughs> and then you're going to sit straight up. And then after that, you are going to lean back slightly. And this is just going to hit various areas of the gluteals. Okay, so next is our superset, starting off with RDLs, Romanian deadlifts. And make sure you're trying to either add a few reps from last week or go up in weight while still maintaining good form. If you don't feel you can, if it still feels way too challenging, then don't. But the goal is to be pushing yourself to lift more when you safely can. And then for the quadruped kickbacks, this week we are adding in a pulse. So basically it's the same thing, but at the top, you just do a little pulse and pulse and pulse. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> And then you would rest and repeat. So this is just going to be how you burn out for the workout. So burn out for the workout. So once you finish your last set of the quadruped kickbacks, you're going to put on your band and do a glute bridge with an abduction at the top. So that just means you're going to push against the band and then put your knees back in and then go down and up. So you don't have to do this on a bench. You could do this with your feet on the floor, as I will show you right now. And yeah, so again, do as many reps as you can for this. This is just going to burn because you're doing one set. It's the last thing. You're going to finish strong. Oh, yeah. And that's the end of the workout. Congratulations. So as usual, we are starting off the back and shoulder workout with the mobility routine. So I start off with the rotator cuff external rotations, and it's really good to either use extremely light dumbbells or a light resistance band or light cables for this. I really do like the resistance band because it's just really good for warming up since you have constant tension. So then after the rotations, I'm doing the lateral raises. Of course, I do one arm, then the other, and then we move into rear delt pull-aparts. So... The closer you hold for these, the higher the resistance is. So since you don't want things to be overly challenged, don't hold too close together. And then we finish off with a 90 degree rotation. So we're working the shoulder joint at all angles. Get nice and warm, nice and warm. So we're kicking off the workout with eccentric accentuated lat pull downs. So that just means that on the way up, you are slowly bringing the bar back up for a three to four second count. So it's actually really challenging because the cable machine naturally is going to start to pull the bar up. So you got to really fight to control it. So you pull the bar down to your chest pretty quickly and then it's on the way up. You really slowly bring it up. You can try using the same weight that you did for last week's lat pull downs because then if you're able to perform this with the proper tempo, you know that you could have gone heavier last week. And even same thing with this. If you feel like you could go a little bit heavier and still keep up with the tempo, then definitely go heavier. But don't go so heavy that you can't do the three to four second count because for at this point in time, we're just trying to establish that control. So now we're moving on to seated dumbbell presses. Make sure you're pushing yourself to improve from last week in some way, as long as you can do so while maintaining form. So you could either go up a little bit in weight, you could add a rep or two, just keep on pushing. And as usual, make sure you're paying attention to your form still. So don't lower the dumbbells too far. As you can see, I kind of have them lined up around my ears. I push my back into the bench as things get harder. And there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now we are going into our supersets. So this is going to be a single arm lateral raise superset with dumbbell rows. Now the difference in a single arm lateral raise and a double arm lateral raise is the single arm forces you to focus more on your form and you have to focus more on stability as well because you don't have the dumbbells in both hands to counteract each other. So you really have to brace and make sure you stay sturdy and you're not swinging around. It also makes it harder to cheat during this movement. So 
you need a little bit more control, try and use the same amount as you did last week with the double arms. And of course, if it feels easy still, you can use more weight as long as you're maintaining proper form. And then we go straight into our dumbbell rows. As I've said a few times already, either focus on adding weight or reps from last week, make sure your form is still on point, be pulling the dumbbell up to the side of your chest and keep your back tight. Okay, so this is our final tricep. So we start off with our cable rear flies. And then we are doing our straight arm lat pull downs and we are doing these eccentric accentuated as well. So these are amazing with this variation. Amazing. I'm obsessed. So basically on the way down, you're going to go normal tempo, one to two seconds. Once you bring the bar down, you're going to pause for two seconds. And then you are going to raise the bar up slowly for three to four seconds. So this, I just love this variation because you really, really feel it in your back. It kind of takes a lot of the feeling of your triceps out of the movement and it's just really isolating the lats and it's awesome. So just make sure you're really keeping this controlled. And then last exercise of the tricep is my favorite exercise, side to front raises. So for our lying leg and hip raise this week, you want to really make sure you're controlling on the way down. This is just going to make you feel it in your abs a lot more. So you're hiking your hip up, hip, hip. you're hiking your hips up and then slowly lowering back down with as much control as you can. And then of course, if you're still not quite at this level, you can stick with the regular lying leg raises and you can kind of do a similar thing where you're just trying to keep things a little more controlled on the way down. Okay, so we're starting off this workout with chin-ups or assisted chin-ups. So when you are doing assisted chin-ups with a resistance band, make sure you're keeping the movement really controlled just because it's gonna help you build up your strength better and more effectively to unassisted chin-ups. So don't just use momentum from the band, keep it controlled and not too fast. So this week for the dumbbell bench press, we want to really keep the tempo controlled. So you're counting to three on the way down, pausing for two seconds at the bottom and then pushing up quickly for one second. So basically when you do this, it's just helping build your strength for the exercise when you're not pausing. And it definitely makes it quite a bit more challenging. I was challenged. <laughs> Okay, so now we are doing a superset with inclined dumbbell flies and seated dumbbell overhead extensions. So for the dumbbell flies, make sure you're not bringing your arms down too low. You would not really want to go any lower than I am doing right here. Otherwise, you, you might hurt yourself. So then <laughs> we go next right into our seated dumbbell overhead extensions. So for both of these try to increase weight or reps from last week if you can while maintaining good form next is our skull crusher and bar bicep curl superset so we're starting off with our skull crushers with dumbbells i really prefer skull crushers with dumbbells as opposed to the bar because i used to notice that one arm was significantly weaker than the other when I first switched to dumbbells and now that I'm always doing dumbbells for this exercise they're pretty even so that's nice <laughs> and then the bicep curls those I don't care if it's with the bar so much make sure your arm your upper arm is always just staying in one place towards the end if it moves a little bit just if you're trying to get in an extra rep or two that's okay but nothing too crazy nothing too crazy keep it under control kids so this is the last upper body superset of this workout. So after the last set, we will be doing a drop set. So we're going to pretend this is the last set. And first, you're obviously going to do it as a superset. So I'll have done my dumbbell tricep kickbacks. And then I go right into my seated incline bicep curls. And that's still using our regular working set weight. And then once we are done the third set... We are going to lower the weight and immediately start all over again. So usually you'd be resting between sets, but for this, because it's the end and we're just burning out, we do it this way. 
and it burns. Let me tell you. Let me tell you that. You can tell it burns. Look at me. I'm glistening with sweat. Looks like I've got highlighter on. Just kidding. It's sweat. <laughs> okay, we always end this workout off with a plank. So you're just holding it for as long as you can. Maybe tapping around your hands like I am. <laughs> Making sure your body is neutral to the floor. And there you go. So these are cable pull-throughs, one and a half rep style. So what you're doing is you're lowering down for two seconds and then you're explosively extending your hips and then you're lowering back down halfway of your range of motion, then explosively, explosively pull through again. So that is a full rep. And then we go straight into banded constant tension squats. So... If this, if you feel like you are doing the full rep range and it's still not challenging enough, you can use multiple bands. I like to do that sometimes. So, and to make it constant tension, basically you're just not taking any pauses. And I'm not even completely straightening my legs. I'm keeping them a little bit more bent than usual. And then we're going into just regular side-lying leg raises. And then you would rest and start the tricep all over again. So this is the alternative option for those who want to take out one of the previous supersets and instead do some extra glutes. So this is not the actual exercises. This is the activation. So I mean, it's still exercises, but yeah, this is the glute activation. So we're actually doing less exercises for the activation and you can just do one round because the exercises we're doing are pretty glute focused anyways. So it's not like you need to be like, Hello, glutes. Everyone, please take note of my butt print on the floor. <laughs> see, that's why these pants are great. Like, you can see my butt print when I sit on the floor, but the pants don't look sweaty. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so we are starting off our high rep leg day with eccentric accentuated box squats. And this time on the very last set, we're adding in myo reps and warning, it's it's death. It's, it's death. That's the only way I can describe it. So remember to keep the eccentric, aka the lowering down, controlled. You're lowering down for about three seconds, tapping your butt on the seat, and then just standing up quickly. And then for the myo reps, basically what you're going to do is perform your full set and then you take a five second rest like I'm doing right here. Then you'll do three squats. Then you will take another five second rest and then you will do two squats. So during the myo reps, that's when you're going to be dying because when you're standing up at the top, you're not getting a full rest. It's still hard because you're holding the bar. So just make sure you are still keeping the movement controlled towards the end when you are dying. Good luck. So since this is our second leg day of the week, this is our more higher rep leg day. So the goal this week would be to add, either add weight or add reps from last week's high rep leg day for this exercise. So the second time around last week that you did sumo deadlifts, go and look at what weight you did and either try to increase a little bit or add a few reps. And the reason you wouldn't compare it to the first leg day of the week is because that leg day is lower rep, meaning you are using higher weight. This leg day has higher rep, meaning you're using lower weight. So I just wanted to remind you guys of that to ensure you were getting the most out of the varying rep ranges. So these are banded constant tension frog pumps. So I actually love doing this variation on the Smith machine because it's easier to keep constant tension. This is meant to just be like a quicker movement with a smaller range of motion. So that's easiest done on a Smith machine. If you're doing it on the floor with a barbell, it's a little bit of an awkward setup. If you're using a dumbbell, again, you can't use quite as much weight. So for that reason, I actually like the Smith machine best for this exact variation. 
So we're increasing the difficulty from our lunges last week, and this week we are having a front foot elevated lunge. So this is freaking killer. I love it because you're getting a larger range of motion and you can go deeper into the lunge. You're going to feel it in your glute a little bit more. So it's awesome. If you don't have a stepper like I do here, you could use a plate or two. Just make sure whatever you're using is sturdy. Don't step up onto something that's going to be wobbly and unsafe. And then for our banded seated abductors, we're doing the three angle thing that we added in on Monday. So for the first few reps, you were leaning far forward. The next set of reps, you're going to be sitting upright. And then the last set of reps, you are leaning back slightly. Woohoo! So for this superset, we are doing a staggered stance, also known as a B stance, Romanian deadlift. So basically, you're focusing on one leg at a time. So the leg with the foot fully planted on the floor is the working leg. The back leg is basically this, just there to help you for balance. So what this does is helps with muscular imbalances and it can help with your overall strength for the deadlift and it is also good because since you're doing one leg at a time it's a bit easier to get better mind muscle muscle connection so it's a great accessory exercise to the deadlift and then here we are doing quadruped kickbacks with a little twist we have it we have added a fire hydrant so basically just keep your knee really squeezing the dumbbell and you won't have any issues. I use like a 20 to 25 pound dumbbell for this and I don't have problems with it sliding around. It can just take a little bit of getting used to. So keep that in mind. <laughs> You're gonna fall over. You're on the ground. I know, but I was gonna tip over. <laughs> so for our finisher, we do one set of <sighs> high rep frog pumps. I was struggling, you guys. So as you can see, I have two bands on. I have, <laughs> I have it. They're both heavy resistance bands. So honestly, I wouldn't even recommend it. Like it was so hard. I kept feeling like I was going to tip over. So I would actually put a lower resistance band, like maybe a rubber one under the knees, not another heavy-ish one. But anyways, that's what you're doing. You're just doing high reps, really burning out the glutes and then you're done. You are done. Okay, so first exercise is lat pull downs. Now, for those following the program, these lat pull downs are going to feel much easier than the lat pull downs we did at the beginning of the week because these ones aren't eccentric accentuated. Of course, you still want to have control, but it's not quite to the extent as we did on our last back day. Because it's higher rep, you're going to be using less weight, but still enough so that it feels challenging. You shouldn't do your 12 to 15 reps and be like, yeah, that was fun. It should still feel hard by the end of the set. Okay, so this week we are doing our dumbbell presses standing. So you might find that this is a little bit more challenging because since you're standing, you have to use the rest of your body to stabilize and you got to use your core a little bit more. So I'm actually used to seated dumbbell presses. So I found the standing ones harder to do as much weight as I usually do. So that was kind of a nice little challenge. I think they both have their benefits. It's not like one is way better than the other. Say so seated is going to be a little bit more emphasis on the shoulders and then standing is going to take like the rest of your body is going to come into play a little bit more. So that being said, make sure your legs are bent and you're squeezing your glutes in order to support your lower back. Okay, so this superset is leaning lateral raises and chest supported dumbbell rows. So for the lateral raises, you can do them with cables or dumbbells. Um, I'm doing dumbbells here just because the rep range is quite high on this day. So some cables don't actually go light enough, which is a lot for me to say because I'm pretty strong with lateral raises. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, and then chest supported dumbbell rows. You were just putting the bench on a bit of an incline and doing dumbbell rows. So basically the chest is the chest support from the bench is going to make you keep the movement under a little bit more control. So you likely will not be able to use the same amount as you would for dumbbell rows without the chest support. There's no way I could. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so this is our tri set that we're finishing off with. So you're doing cable rear flies 
And then after that, you go straight into floor seated rope lat pull downs. Remember that you're going to need much heavier weight for your lat pull downs than your cable rear flies. So this is basically very similar to regular lat pull downs. It's just you're getting at a different range of motion because of the rope. It's going to let you pull things down a little bit differently so it's a nice little twist it's also just perfect for convenience sake you don't have to be running from the cable machine to the lat pull down machine i know in most gyms that won't go so well and then last exercise of the tricep is side to front raises in the next clip i will show you i will explain the partial reps for cable rear flies and the myo reps for side to front raises Okay, and now we're finishing off with our little ab exercise. So if you want, you can still stick to just regular lying leg raises without the hip raise. So I just wanted to show you guys that it can be done on a bench as well. It's probably a little bit more challenging because you kind of have to balance a little bit more and think to yourself like, oh, I hope I don't tip off the bench. So there's not a massive, massive difference in between the two, but I wanted to show you an alternate variation. All right, and that is days one to five, week two of Shapely Shredding System. Don't forget that if you would like the entire program sent to you for free, you can subscribe to my email list. Link is in the description box below. Um, be on the lookout. I mean, it depends on when you're watching this video. If you're watching it as it's being released, be on the lookout. If you're watching it after the fact, um, I don't know, but <laughs> be on the lookout for knockout formula. Shit. Be, <gasps> be on the lookout for knockout formula. That is my free report. It's around 40 pages. I'm just saying around because we're still editing a, a little bit. So it might be longer. Anyways, free report, knockout body formula how to avoid the three most common fat loss mistakes. And it is, I, I worked my ass off on this thing and it's, I'm so excited because it answers all of the questions that I'm, that I'm asked on a regular basis by followers, by clients. There's a lot of, there's practical tips about nutrition and workouts, but then there's also like mindset and motivation tips that I use and whoo, I'm excited. So anyways, that's, only going to be available for three days so be on the lookout i will announce the date soon and yes that is all if you liked this video please like and subscribe and that's it i hope you guys have a lovely day and if you try the workouts let me know how they go bye